Hey people, welcome to another episode of Backyard Mechanic. We're on the 150 Prado again today and I'm going to be installing something that I reckon most people with a four wheel drive have thought about doing at some point. We're going to install a snorkel, so it can on the water. The first thing to think about when you're putting on a snorkel is what side of the car it goes on. In this case, the airbox is on this side. We need to make access to the underside of the wheel arch a little bit easier. So we're going to jack it up off the chassis down there, take the wheel off and remove the inner guard liner. What a bloody stupid idea these plastic trim clips are. I've got this Tool Pro trim clip remover, which is great, but the head on these are too flimsy and the tool just slips over the top and you end up just wrecking the clip. So I think I've salvaged, yeah, it looks like three, three out of about 12. Here's our snorkel kit. Now, before you go ripping that inner guard liner off or anything for that matter, probably check that everything's here. You've got the instruction manual. Now that tells you everything that should be in the kit. This one was actually missing the guard template, the cutting template. Uh, the company sent us a new one out, no hassle at all, but uh, you won't get far without that. So there's the guard template. This big bit of hose that runs to the airbox from the inner guard. Destructions, probably want them. That'll tell you what size to drill all the holes, where to drill them, how to attach everything. There's the snorkel body. Snorkel head, and just a bag of uh, fittings, big hose clamps. It's got some big extruded thing in there. But generally the first thing you do is drill all the holes. So you do the no turning back bit first. Here's our template. Now there you've got the big hole, that's where the snorkel goes through. What they tell you to do here is drill a pilot hole there and there, and use an 89 mil hole saw, I believe it was. Uh, go through that pilot hole and drill two 89 mil holes and then just whittle away the um, little bit that it leaves in between. So you're supposed to have an oval hole. And then you've got these holes along here. Those are all just uh, for the mounting of the snorkel. Now what we're doing instead, this is another way that I like to do it. Instead of purchasing an 89 mil hole saw, which is gonna be a little pricey and probably only have this one use, we're using an air body saw. And so to do that, we've continued this oval using a texter. And as you can see, we've started here, we've cut it out. So we're gonna end up with a, just an oval here. Onto the guard, we're going to trace around that oval, drill maybe a 10, 12 mil hole in one corner, and then just use an air body saw to go around. You'll get what I'm talking about once we actually get the air body saw onto it. Now you probably noticed me say a few times how I like to do it, because I've done a few of these. Uh, if you're a long time viewer, you might have picked up on me saying that I used to fit ARB four wheel drive accessories. So I've done a few snorkels. Special shout out to Kyle too. I know he's watching this. He's the guy that taught me. So let's see, if I stuff this up, that's your fault, Kyle. That's your guard template. All taped on there, tape around all the edges. Now I've never seen one any different. They all, you line up the top edge with the very edge of the guard and you line up the back edge with the, um, the gap between the guard and the door. So you align it to the very back of the quarter panel. Like I said, I've never seen one any different to that, but make sure you check. Push that on there, I've marked out all the holes. And then before you go and remove it, I just like to check one more time that the snorkel looks about right, like it's gonna sit there. So there's the big oval shape. There's where our hole's gonna be. You can see there all the spots where the studs will go. Yeah, I guess it looks pretty right. Now, 
we'll take that off, get the center punch and punch out these holes for drilling. Punch out one on the oval here so we can use the air body saw and we'll uh, hit the point of no return. Now we've drilled the pilot holes, we've got to employ the use of a step drill bit. These are pretty nifty tools, they come in at about 20 bucks. This one used to start at four millimeters, but I snapped that off, so it now starts at six. It goes all the way through to 30 millimeters. We've got to do these holes in the guards for the mounting bolts at 16. So these ones just have different steps and we just plunge it into the guard until it gets to the right depth. This is the weakest drill ever. The air body saw, air hack saw, cost about 50 bucks. Maybe even a little cheaper than buying a hole saw for the right size, but this has got a lot more uses. Uh, tips with this, well, you've got to have a hole to start it with. It's just got the blade out the end here, just jabs in and out. And that little foot there, you want to rest that on your paintwork, which is why you want to have masking tape all around the hole. If you don't rest that on there, the um, blade has a better chance of grabbing and then going for a walk across your guard. You don't want that. So you'll just put it in the hole there and I'll just carefully jigsaw my way around. All done, now we've got to hop in here and deburr it. So a little bit crooked around here, just use a file to tidy it up at the edge. Take the file to all of these holes as well, get it from the back, get it from the front, make them all nice and smooth. We still have the upper snorkel body mounts to drill into the Prado. And to get there, we got to install the mount on the actual snorkel. So I'll flip it over. And you can see there's our two holes for the mount. Now this is how the mount goes on. Like that. And then here I've got uh, a, uh, what are these things called? Bolts? <laughs> a bolt with a locking washer and a flat washer on it. Thread those in, thread it on. We don't over tighten these yet. Just get it central within its bracket. It's got slotted holes in this metal bracket. So get the bolts right in the middle of the slots. And that is so when you do drill the holes, if you've drilled them a little bit out either way, you can make up for that in adjustment with the bracket. That's on another thing we have to do to help it to locate on the guard properly is install studs in these holes. This is what they supply you with. Little stud has an Allen key socket in the end there and you always want to use a bit of uh, thread locker. Medium strength blue thread locker in this case. A little dab of that on each one. There we go, thread it in. Don't overdo it because otherwise the Loctite runs down your car panel. Um, I've seen that happen before. The Loctite gets on your paint, runs down the panel, and if it dries, sandpaper is the only way to get it off. You've got to repaint the panel. With all the studs in, we've finally got this piece of foam. It goes around there. I presume that's to stop the snorkel body rubbing on the panel and making a hell of a racket. So we'll uh, give it a bit of a wipe down with some prep sole or something before we peel off the sticky and whack it on. So we've got the bracket mounted there on the snorkel and we've already chucked it on the car to see roughly where the bracket's gonna sit, which is here. So 
we put some masking tape along that section. We place the snorkel on the body of the car with all of the um, studs are lined up with the holes. Have a look at how all of that's sitting. And then we take a pencil. It's gotta be something with a really sharp edge on it so you can get this as accurate as possible. And you just trace the edge of the bracket. Get the corners in there. And now we're gonna to have to take that bracket off there, off the snorkel body, and then rest it on the spot we've marked so that we can then mark the circles for the holes to drill. And use the pencil to mark where we will drill our holes. So you've got to paint all the bare metal as well. If you don't, it will end up rusting and putting big rust streaks all down your paintwork. So we've put some touch-up paint on the holes we drilled. Now we've got to mount the bracket. Now something very confusing is the instructions say to drill these holes to seven and a half millimeters and then insert the plastic screw clips and screw the thing on but the plastic screw clips don't exist. What it actually uses is pop rivets. So if you didn't pre-read the instructions, you'd have already drilled a seven and a half mil hole for a pop rivet that's probably three mil at the most. That out of the way, um, before we put the bracket on, we're going to put a little bit of silicon around each hole because you'd be surprised how easy water gets in if you don't do that. So a little bit of silicon around there, pop rivet the bracket on and wipe away any excess silicon. Now it's time to fit the snorkel. So we put our studs through there. On the back of there, we put the flat washer and the nylock nut. Uh, there's plenty of space behind there, uh, but certain cars, I think the Toyota Hilux was a bit of a pig of a thing to get to. You might want uh, ratchet spanners. But before you go tightening them, you thread in the two 10 mil bolts up there. So get the snorkel all on there, all the bolts in but loose, and then go around, tighten them all up. Well, the afternoon grows late, but we're tracking along. This is the next step, the connecting pipe between the snorkel on that end and the airbox on that end. I can't show you this on camera because it all happens behind the guard and it's too tight up in there. But, got this gigantic hose clamp, right? Got to elongate that a bit. Just squash it down and that'll slip over the end there. And then we've got this one. Goes over this end, that's to go to the airbox. So you get the hose clamp over at first, and then you slip that over the snorkel end, and then you've got to try and weasel that through the hole in the inner guard. So we'll get onto that, and also down here, the snorkel head. We'll pop, pop that on. They give you a nice, neat looking uh, black hose clamp to lock that onto the top. And we're almost there. At this point, I'm gonna say, if you've never installed a snorkel before, buy a safari snorkel because these instructions are hopeless. And if you didn't know what you were doing, you'd be lost. Here it says, uh, for diesel models, you need to install a rubber reducing strip. Well, I don't know when rubber turns so damn solid, but I assume that's what that is. Now that goes onto here. We've just used the die grinder to take off all the um, lips and edges around there. And that fits on there nicely. There's a couple of holes here and here which I would assume we're using these screws in. But before we screw it, we're going to pop that off and silicon around there. And then the other end of that, the hose is going to go over that. Just 
turns out I'm a bit rusty. Um, you put uh, silicon sealant in there. Uh, you want it to be watertight, obviously, airtight, watertight, all of that. So a bit of the same stuff we've used to seal up the holes in the air box and uh, the holes in that A pillar up there. Just smear it around in here and around in there. Got our hose clamp on. And then this next bit can be a bit of a battle sometimes just trying to get it over the end of the snorkel. New day, same flano. I'm gonna finish this thing off. So where did we get up to the other night? Well, we got the pipe that goes between here and the air box in. It's all in, it's got the silicon around it. As you can see, it's a little bit messy. Silicon everywhere, got hose clamps around them. But it looks watertight. Now we've got to put it all back together and give it a test. Just before I put the airbox lid back on, I saw the bit of slaz that we've put down in the bottom, thought I'd better talk about that. Now, in the bottom of this airbox, there was three little holes drilled. I think that's for water drainage. We've sealed them up. There is also another thing, a little rubber one-way valve. That one we've left unsealed. Um, there's two schools of thought here. Uh, the first school of thought is if you don't seal them up, uh, water could come into your engine bay and get up through those holes. The second school of thought is any water that uh, does come in, um, I guess maybe a little bit could come through the snorkel head due to rain, uh, it can't be drained. So really, choose whatever you like. We've gone, as I said, sealed up the three holes and left the little rubber one-way valve because that's supposed to be one way. And knowing my father, he's not gonna go doing water crossings that are two meters deep. Um, I mean, he'll probably see a few puddles and he'll follow me most places I go, but he won't do the tough weekends and the real big water crossings. Now that we've got it installed, there's a few different ways that we could test it out. Number one, take your garden hose, ram it down the top there, switch it on and fill the snorkel all the way to the top with water. If you see any leaking out, then you haven't done a good job. No, that's definitely not a good way to do it. And if you ruin your vehicle doing that, I'm not responsible. Sorry. Okay, number two. Just go up the bush behind your house and smash some mad river crossings. Go plug through a few dams, and if your engine blows up, you didn't do a good job. Also, not the best way to do it. It would work, not ideal. The way I do it, we've reconnected all the airbox and everything. We just start up the vehicle, and we put a plastic bag or something over the top of the snorkel head. Uh, you should feel extreme suction, and this might not stall because it's a diesel, you know, it can, it can suck through a fair bit, but what we might hear is for any leaking. In fact, probably should do that before you put the inner guard liner and everything back on, um, because you'll hear hissing if you've done a terrible job. So if I hear hissing, I now have to take that wheel back off, take all the guard liner out, and that won't be fun. So let's hope I did a good job. So there you go, that's a fairly typical snorkel installation, about the same for all sorts of vehicles, and hopefully you've got an idea now whether you can tackle your own or not. If you're pretty new to working on your vehicles and new to the tools, I'd suggest not tackling a snorkel install. It's a little daunting, to say the least, uh, but maybe you've got a mate that's got a few tools and a spare afternoon in the shed, take around a few bevies and you can easily knock it out in an afternoon. So I hope you found this video entertaining, maybe even informative. If you did, make sure you subscribe to Intense Off-Road because there's plenty more backyard mechanic to come. See you next time.